on an autumn morning in the rolling bluff lands of southeastern Minnesota. Peace and tranquility. You're likely to find Barb yeah. and John Haverty. A great little church right down the road, little white church. But not long ago. We tire on this little farm. John wasn't able to walk the land with Barb, toss a frisbee for the pup. a boy, Doug. Or travel the country roads in his convertible. I kind of hit rock bottom. And, and just kind of like, I don't, I don't even know if I want to believe in myself anymore. What's the point? I mean, really, uh, I'm a burden to my family. I'm a burden to myself. I'm not ever going to be productive again. I mean, I don't know where to go. You see, for 11 years, John struggled with a bacterial infection after a knee replacement that did not respond to conventional treatments, such as surgery and antibiotics. That was the beginning of the cascading failures of... 17 surgeries, five different strains of bacteria. We never, ever killed the bacteria in my leg over all these years. Antibacterial resistance is a crisis that we're dealing with in the world today. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports that each year in the U.S., close to 2.8 million people will get infected with antibiotic-resistant bacteria and fungi. And nearly 35,000 of those people will die from the infection. John feared he, too, would become a statistic. They said, well, We've done all we can do, really. Doctors told John that in order to save his life, he'd have to lose his leg. 38.0. Just when they began to lose hope, John and Barb learned about an experimental treatment. Desperate for help, they went to Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. When I first met him, he was in a wheelchair. Mayo Clinic infectious diseases specialist Dr. Gina Su is one of John's doctors. He was faced with, at the age of 62, um, you know, an amputation. Um, and, you know, we didn't really choose him, he chose us. Um, John and his wife Barb advocated for themselves. They did their own research and they came to us and they said, you know, what about phage therapy? Phages are viruses that infect bacteria. Dr. Robin Patel chairs the Division of Clinical Microbiology at Mayo Clinic and studies phages in her lab. When you hear the term virus, it makes you very, very nervous you, because you think of things like the flu, for example. But those kinds of viruses are viruses that target us and our cells. Viruses that target bacteria, which are what phage are, are very specific for bacteria. Phage therapy is actually very old. It was used in the early 1900s, but was abandoned when new antibiotics showed unprecedented success. But now that antibiotic resistance has become a critical issue, researchers are once again exploring phages as another way to treat bacterial infections and as an alternative for people who are allergic to antibiotics. Here's how phages work. When injected, a phage migrates to the bacterial infection and lands on the surface. Once there, it injects genetic material into the bacteria cells. It then replicates and destroys the bacteria cells. The copies then disperse and attack other bacteria cells. Because research into phages is so new, there was no guarantee phage therapy would work for John. It's like, please, I have nowhere else to turn. I'll do anything. But we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. He actually responded incredibly quickly. After only two doses, we started to visibly see an improvement. We thought, well, this is a fluke, you know, it'll come back. You think, oh my God, this is a miracle. After nearly losing his leg and his life to a drug-resistant infection, John considers himself cured. This is the first time I could really ever picture myself being an old man walking my dogs down the road. My life has changed. When I heard that, I was just overjoyed. That, that makes you know, my whole day, my whole year. Both Dr. Su and Dr. Patel say that even though phage therapy worked for John, more research is needed before it can be offered widely. My hopes are big. Researchers need to find out many things, including if phages are safe for everyone, if they'll work for other patients, how to efficiently grow them in what are called phage farms, and how best to administer them. <laughs> <laughs> but for John and Barb... It's freedom. It's giving me my life yeah. back. Phage therapy has given them a new life. It's just been an incredible ride. And now I'm going to be an advocate. I'm going to be a broker of hope for those millions of people that have antibiotic-resistant bacteria and they consider every day spent together on their farm this is what it's all about at the end of the day to be a gift just being out with my dogs and my wife and 
enjoying life and this beautiful fall day. Being here offers us the peace and the solitude and the reward of living. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Vivian Williams.